I'm not the biggest fan of BCAAs, branched chain amino acids. Now, I've got a few reasons why, but I'm gonna share them with you. I'm gonna break it down, I'm gonna give you the science, and I'm also gonna help you learn when you can use the BCAAs to get a little bit more out of them. There is a strategic time and a place that they work really well for you, but the vast majority of people are using BCAAs in an entirely wrong way. And the reality is it could actually hurt you more than it helps you. So I'm not here to rain on your parade. I'm here to ultimately save you money so you don't have to go out and buy BCAAs if you don't need them, all right? So let's go ahead and let's break it down. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition and fat loss channel. We've got new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and a bunch throughout the week as well. Wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button, that red icon there, and then go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live or post a new video. All right, so let's go ahead and just start real quick. Branch chain amino acids are simply amino acids that are supposed to help you out with muscle breakdown. They help prevent muscle breakdown. Or uh, a lot of the BCAs out there will tell you that they're gonna help you build muscle. There's just a lot of myths surrounding it, and quite honestly, they're just a relatively cheap supplement that people try to push. Now, I'm not here to be totally anti-BCAA, I'm just here to break it down. Okay, so number one reason that I really don't like BCAAs is simply because they do break a fast. Now, I have a lot of people out there on the internet that hate on me because I say they break a fast. The reality is, they do, okay? The main constituent of BCAAs is something known as leucine, okay? I'm gonna make this as simple as possible, but it's relatively complex. BCAAs contain leucine, isoleucine, and valine, okay? Three amino acids. Leucine is the main constituent. That's the main thing that we're after when it comes down to BCAAs. Now, the reason that we like leucine in a BCAA is because it is supposed to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, meaning it's supposed to help turn on the process in which your body builds muscle. Now, that's not entirely true when we start looking at the big picture, which I'll get to at point number two. But for now, we're talking about how it breaks the fast. You see, leucine is an allosteric activator of what's called glutamate dehydrogenase. This is a very complicated process, but essentially what it means is it activates an insulin spike. It triggers an insulin secretion to ultimately regulate protein synthesis through gene transcription. Now, again, very complicated way of explaining this, but essentially what's going on is when leucine comes in, it is so used so fast and it's absorbed so quickly and it's activating protein synthesis allegedly, in such a fast way that it triggers an insulin spike. Now, it does this through altering our actual genetics. It changes specific gene transcription. So the body sees this leucine and it kind of treats it like a food because it's altering how our genes see it, okay? Now, what this does, and again, I'm gonna make it simple, is it increases something known as cyclic adenosine monophosphate, okay? This could be good. Let me just rephrase this. CAMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate, can actually instigate fat burning. It can actually turn on fat burning processes when it activates something known as a beta adrenergic receptor. So don't get me wrong, the fact that it increases CAMP is not a bad thing. But this particular way that it activates CAMP activates an alpha adrenergic receptor instead of a beta. What this means is it turns on mTOR. This is complex, let me make it simple. mTOR is the body's anabolic switch. When we turn on mTOR, our body gets into muscle building mode. Okay, again, allegedly, right? So what happens is leucine turns on mTOR. That is the complete opposite of a fast. We don't want mTOR to be elevated. When mTOR is elevated, autophagy stops. Okay, so we break a fast, it spikes your insulin. Now, when you're on a keto diet, this could be something different. The insulin spike is so small that it may not really affect a ketogenic diet, but it is going to affect a fast significantly, which means that this will break a fasted workout. So if you get up in the morning, even if you're not doing keto or anything or intermittent fasting, if you get up in the morning and you train fasted, which by the way you should, this is going to stop it. So most people consume BCAAs while they're working out. Bad move, don't wanna do that, okay? It's stopping the fat burning process, which leads me into point number two. Okay, sipping them all day hurts your fat loss. Okay, it doesn't just hurt your fat loss with your workouts, and it doesn't just spike insulin, which is a bad thing. It actually can hurt your overall fat loss if you're sipping them throughout the day. I know a lot of people that sip branched chain amino acids all day because they think it's gonna help them prevent muscle breakdown. Again, I will get more to this point when we get down to point number three. But essentially, I wanted to reference a study. So the Journal of Diabetes took a look at 1,205 subjects and gave them, on average, 13.8 grams of BCAAs per day. Okay, now, 
what they were testing for at this, they wanted to see if people were taking BCAAs daily for a long period of time, would they end up with hyperinsulinemia, would they end up with beta cell dysfunction, or any insulin resistance? Okay, so they wanted to see overall what metabolic effect it had. The results were pretty interesting. So when you look at a mean, uh, mean end uh, time, basically the study went on for a mean 2.3 years, give or take, right? What they found is within the highest tertile, the highest amount of BCAAs that were consumed were correlated with the highest insulin resistance. What does that mean? Insulin resistance is something that diabetics get, right? That's like a type two diabetic, you're insulin resistant. It means you have such an insulin spike happening all the time that your body has now become resistant to insulin. This normally only happens if you consume a bunch of carbs. Okay, well, Journal Diabetes actually found that consuming BCAAs, generally speaking, triggered insulin resistance when people consumed a lot more BCAA. So BCAAs definitely have an effect on insulin, and when you take a lot of them over the course of a day, you can end up with some more insulin resistance. Not only is that bad from a health perspective, but it proves the point of number one. We don't want this insulin spike. The whole purpose of fat loss is trying to counteract insulin in a way, which brings me to my point, it blunts glucagon. Okay, so what happens is when we eat food, we have an insulin spike. We eat food, insulin spikes, in order to allow those nutrients to be absorbed. Insulin opens the cell doorway. Now, once that food has left our system, okay, what happens is another hormone known as glucagon elevates. This glucagon hormone is what allows carbs to be released from the muscle and ultimately allows fat to be released through the activation of hormone-sensitive lipase. So what that essentially is telling us is that glucagon is good. After you digest a meal and you're in that lull between meals is when your body burns fat. If you're sipping on BCAAs all day and you're having this insulin spike, you never get to have that big spike in glucagon because insulin's always blunting it, okay? This could be okay if you're really in a muscle bulking mode and you just don't care. But if you're trying to stay lean and lose a lot of weight in the process, then it's not something you want to do. Now, a lot of times I recommend just sipping on green tea throughout the course of the day. Honestly, if you sip on green tea throughout the course of the day, you end up with a bit of an anti-catabolic effect too, simply because you have additional adrenaline, noradrenaline, some of these things that, which believe it or not, can have an effect on sparing muscle. Okay, so that's, I'm a big fan of Yujito, by the way. So Yujito is a matcha company that is really awesome. So they actually have single serve packets that you can just add to water or you can add to whatever you want and that's going to give you that spike that you need throughout the course of the day instead of BCAA. So Yujito makes it really simple. Literally, they just like tear open a single serving pack, put it in some water. That's what I sip on throughout the course of the day. And honestly, I feel like I get a better muscle sparing effect from that than I ever do from drinking BCAAs. And I don't have the insulin spike, not to mention it tastes super darn good. So there is a link down in the description if you want to check them out. I have special pricing for anyone that watches my videos. So no pressure at all, but honestly, if you want to get some good green tea, big fan of them. So check them out. Better than BCAAs in my opinion. All right, now let's move on to number three. They're not a complete protein, okay? It is not a protein. It is not going to build muscle. It can help you build muscle in conjunction with food, and I'll get to that in a second. Basically, let's, let's break down with a study. So International Society of Sports Nutrition found and published this. There's, there's only three essential amino acids in branch chain amino acids. So what that means is in order to have a complete protein, we need all nine essential amino acids. We need everything that we need. So when you only have three of these essential amino acids in a product, you're not building muscle. You're not, you don't have a complete protein. So even if you have the main driver of building muscle, which is leucine, you're not getting the muscle building effect because your body has to break down other proteins to get the other amino acids. If you give yourself three amino acids and you need more, your body's going to pull from protein to break them down. So basically, you could actually be causing yourself muscle breakdown if you're relying on branched chain amino acids. You're never really getting there. So you're not actually turning on protein synthesis, which is what I was talking about here in number one. You're not truly turning it on. It's like you're flipping the switch. It's like you're turning the car on, but there's no fuel. That's the simplest way to do it. Like, you're not going anywhere. You're not getting anything. You just turn the ignition on. So you turn anabolism on enough to stop fat loss, but you don't have the goods to actually build muscle or really preserve it. This could only happen if you are consuming BCAAs with a meal. So if you're trying to get more out of a meal and get more protein out of it, you actually could consume BCAAs with a meal and get more protein synthesis, get more protein build, more muscle build with less calories. So that is a trick. BCAAs, in my opinion, 
are best consumed with food to sort of hijack the process and get more muscle building for less money. That's the only place that I feel like they have a solid uh, purpose. Okay, the next one is more of a myth that I wanted to bust. People sip on branched chain amino acids all the time because they think that it curbs their hunger. I think this is more psychosomatic than anything because it is not the case, okay? It does not curb hunger. You see, if anything, it's going to make you more hungry because you have an insulin spike. When insulin spikes, blood sugar drops, which makes you hungry. So if anything, BCAAs will make you more hungry because you had an insulin spike. So we don't want that. I know as I spelled spike wrong, I spelled it spick, but you can have an insulin spick too. Okay, so again, that kind of brings me back to, that's why I just sip on green tea. Okay, now this is a common theme throughout all my videos, so don't think that this is just some, some random thing. I'm always talking about green tea. Green tea has the epigallocatechin 3 gallate, so it has the EGCG in it to actually blunt hunger and also promote what's called CCK, cholecystokinin. So if you're truly trying to actually blunt hunger, green tea is gonna be the way to go. And again, that's exactly why I use Yujito. So if you wanna check them out and get like little on the go sticks, definitely make sure you check them out down, special link down in the description. So this is the general theme of this, right? We have to use BCAAs when truly applicable. Put them with food. That way it's going to enhance the protein you're already getting. Now people will consume them to try to prevent muscle protein breakdown. And I understand why. At the end of the day, it's still a calories in, calories out game. And we have to keep that in mind. But taking BCAAs isn't really going to do a whole lot other than slow down the fat loss process. You're better off to just, just go for it, honestly. So as always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. So if you have ideas for future videos or you just wanna know more about this topic, just let me know down in the comment section. We'll see you soon.